What's up, Internet? We are back with more N64 nonsense. Last time, we took a look at a bunch of kind of wonky, janky fighting games that were still kind of fun. Uh, and now we got to do Forsaken 64, which I don't know that much about. Um, as far as I know, that's fine. I don't need to save. I think this game was kind of like a, a descent sort of knockoff game where it was like 3d flying underground is in like a spaceship type of thing uh that's that's pretty much all i know about it. it also came out on the playstation and i think uh the playstation version had like cutscenes, whereas this version had like multiplayer or, or something also it's put up by acclaim which means i have virtually no interest in it so that's fun also, I'm getting, like, no audio off my TV right now, so that's good. But it seems like it's coming through on the, uh, the actual device, so that's good. I might turn that down just a scooch. Hopefully that the audio makes it all right. Uh, so yeah, this will be the first time I've ever played this game. But, uh, let's, let's give it a shot, and let's see if I can continue to hate a claim for everything they've ever done. I'm looking forward to it, honestly. <laughs> I think they also did Iggy's Reckon Balls to to further skew the the argument in my favor. All right, let's let's use Player One, the Player Oneington. Mission Nuke. Do I get to deliver a nuke? The abandoned nuclear plant is setting for first foray into heart of mechanoid defense force. Objective is to clear all enemies. Easy enough. Don't want to use rumble pack. I wish I could just across every game ever ahead of time just say no rumble pack ever thank you. Or sounds like an internal setting. The game okay. begins. There is carnage ahead. And you know I kind of remember a Flash game on Cartoon Network that was set up for Toonami that was kind of based around uh, sort of a, um, a a descent style game. Yeah, I'd like to skip this. Thanks. Okay, so oh god. Okay, C stick moves. That's up. That's down. That's left. That's right. Okay, that's whoa. Okay, A is forward. Okay, uh, Z appears to be the shooting button. Use the shooty button. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Ah. Okay. This feels very, very sensitive. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised at how smooth this game is running, honestly. I was kind of expecting this to be a, a lot choppier. Is there a way to turn down the sensitivity a scooch? Oh, you can change the songs. Let's see. Pyrolite, that sounds cool. Oh, you can... Oh, that's cool. Turn up the contrast and the brightness. Oh, you can put it in a third-person view? Th that's actually quite impressive. You know what? That's that's an impressive suite of options, Forsaken. I'll give you that. I'm not going to say I'm enjoying you terribly, but, you know, if you, you tone down the uh, sensitivity options... I don't have a lot of health is a problem. Yeah, I see that my shield is critical. I'm not seeing any health power-ups, though. Okay, let's find some health. Uh, that looks like a thing. I think those are rockets. We don't want that. Whoa. Okay. Shoulder buttons, fire special weapons, power pod. That's not health. Where the hell is the health power-ups? Those are the only ones that matter. <laughs> Up. Ugh. I'm getting a little bit of, like, uh, motion sickness from that. That looks like a thing. Alright, there's some shield. Good. Alright, cool. Now I've got a slightly better weapon. I, I think we're okay. For now. You know, until I'm not. Then it's gonna be a problem. Oh, my shield's critical already. Shield? Not shield. Weapon. Whoa. I'd like to not get caught up on the... That looks like a... Whatever an orbital pulsar is. Eat a bunch of lasers. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I think shield... 
there's like a, a health and a shield meter, and you go through like your health after your shield, because I seem to be taking damage, but I'm not, you know, dying. Okay. Okay. I saw an enemy there, but I guess not. You know, I don't think this game is bad. But I'm not sure I'd say it's good right off. Although I think it's surprising it's running as smooth as it is. And it's just from the smoothness kind of an enjoyable experience in that regard. Even if there's like bad motion sickness left, right, and center. Oh, there looks like an enemy. It doesn't help that the enemies kind of move around. Like, I, I'm probably gonna like apples and oranges game comparison here for a sec, but you know, that was the good thing about Doom, is you kind of could tell where you've been and where you needed to go just based on how many bodies were lying around, but because enemies move, and and they can be basically anywhere, and they're following like a, probably a patrol pattern of some kind, that means that there's not really a way to offhand tell whether or not you've been somewhere yet or not. You know? And my cat wants to go outside, ugh. Just wait until I'm done this game, please. Uh, I'm getting a new chair. Well, new used. This will be the second one in the past six months I've gotten. Because my chair squeaks too much and it's uncomfortable. I couldn't even tell that one was there. Okay, I'm going to get my cat because he's going to keep bugging me if I don't. Okay. See you, Mr. Cat. Alright. Yeah, so far this is... I'm not gonna say it's good, but, you know, if you can get it for cheap, it's not horrible. Within touching distance of the Babarlas, hidden within the mission. I'm guessing this is all information you would pick up if you read the manual, which I don't have, because multi-cart. We're just gonna spawn you with enemies shooting at you. <laughs> That's sensible. Okay, well, we got two kills anyway. Some wall made out of ice. Alright, let's just... Oh, well, there goes our missiles. Those lasers are really wildly ineffective. Uh, weapon ammo. There's a shield. That's what we want. You know, that, that's the thing that I'm noticing about this is it's really hard to tell what anything is. Like, is that a power-up or is that an enemy? I genuinely can't tell. Okay, that's an enemy because it's shooting at me. Got it. I feel like this game wants you to just not stop moving at any point, but I think it's like too... Like, not jerky, because it's very smooth, but it's it's too sensitive and, f like, almost fast for the hardware to, like, of, a, like, a keyboard, or a keyboard, uh, a controller to keep up. But if you add something like a mouse, this might work a lot better. Okay. I did a thing. Did I open this, or did I do a thing down there? Because that was a blue thing. I genuinely can't tell. This game's not exactly great at telling things. Okay, ooh. Shield, yes please. Thing shooting at me. Quit it. Okay. You wanna just hurry up and die? Cause you're kinda I can kinda strafe using the C buttons, but it's it's not super comfortable. Wow, the, the default laser is just not very good. Okay. What was that? There was a thing. What was the thing? It was that thing. Did I do that? <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Okay. That's my, my cunning strategy of flying right past them before they decide to turn around. It seems like it's some kind of um, distraction. Like, I'm sure there's more upgrades for my gun, considering that in the last game I, I was firing a lot faster, but... Gun power in this game, not super great. 
Okay. Okay. Come on. Yes, I'm aware. I've got all sorts of low energy right now. Oh, good, a tank. I'm just gonna jiggle the strafe button a little. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Oh, you've got a, a like, a freaking hit scan laser, do you? That's no good. Open up. Thank you. Health, 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 health. That's not health. None of those are health. The one thing I need. But I have a toe jam, whatever that means. But alas, Earl was not to be found. Oh man, now I gotta play some toe jam and Earl. That game was awesome. Got a remake, like uh, or, or a new game in the series, like a year ago too, which was really cool. I've been here before, I can tell. Um. Do I need to go back the way I came and like look for something else I missed? Whoa. Like, cause I feel like there should be a thing. There's the magical ice door that uh, has a crystal key behind it that does nothing. Thanks, Banjo Kazooie. But I'm not seeing any more things to kill or any other places to go. Hmm. Quizzical. We can go back down here, but this is definitely the way we came. Oh! Now we can go this way. Why is this one glowing? Is that relevant? Am I, is it gonna, like, nuke me? Is this like Hexen where you... You hit a switch and, like, the entire room just decides to kill you instantly. Or, like, it opens up a door in, like, another completely different world and you have no idea where it is. Hexen was not the best game ever made. Alright, well, that was certainly a thing. That was Forsaken. And I'm glad I can Forsake it. Actually, that wasn't horrible, but... Next is Spock's... Spox, thank you, brain. Spox Forts Challenge Hoops 99. Obviously, we got to play this. It's it's the premier uh, Star Trek hoops game. That's fine. I'm fine with stuff not being saved. Thanks, Spox. All right. Okay, that guy looks terrified. Demo press starts. Exhibition game! Sure. Yes. Okay, let's go. Many rules disabled. Okie doke. These faces look terrifying. <laughs> These animations are great. Okay. So... For logic and Spox. Dupa 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 I played a lot of basketball when I was in school. I don't know the rules to basketball at all. The only reason I was forced to play it is because I was like six and a half feet tall. I don't know Jack about sports. Ah uh, now where's the part where I can decapitate my opponent for uh, for making me look bad and dishonoring me? That's the kind of football or uh, freaking basketball I want to play. How do I shoot? There we go. A and B. A logical combination to be sure. Spox would be proud. Him and his many, many, many clones. You know the the founders of this Spox Forts League. Woo! <laughs> the animation of these characters is just so derpy. <laughs> and, and it feels like there's they're missing, like, frames of animation in between animation. Like, they're just kind of jittering from, like, the start of one animation to the end of it. Okay, do a thing, please. 
I don't care if you win or lose, I just want something to happen. Okie doke. I guess I'm doing a thing now. Woo! Bonk. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Where's the part where I tackle him? I, I want my tackle button. Alright. Okay, 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 okay. Oop! Ba doop. There we go. Alright. Alright. Okay. Yup. Sure. That ball teleported from that character to the other one. Didn't even, like, fly across the, the screen. Do a thing, AI, because I'm literally just sitting here waiting for you to do something. It's literally the AI playing with itself, and you pass it backwards? Okay, I don't know jack about sports, but I can tell you that's counterproductive to actually doing anything. Just sort of jitter in place for a little while, and then move it backwards. Do a thing! <laughs> Make this interesting for me. Alright. Go! Go, 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 go! Half court! <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was almost happy for a brief moment about sport ball. Low. I think I knocked it in. I don't think Vander Blit is a real place. I contest that. Oh. I don't want to take any shots that aren't from half court nowadays. That's that's the rules. If I have to take a shot, it's half court. Boomp. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't even get on the rebound. Oh, I am bad at all forms of sport ball. Except the ones that involve decapitating your opponents for making you look bad. I'm good at those kinds of sport ball. Alright, go, 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 go. Shoot! Oh. <laughs> that wasn't even a dunk. That was just sort of, we're going to jitter around and say it phased through the hoop. If you want a perfect example of how not on top of sports I am, when I was in high school, uh, we, we had a, uh, a football chunk where we had to play football in, uh, in um, you know, gym. And I, I would sit there, and they, like, the team leader or whatever would uh, tell us the team plan, and he kept using the term QB. And every time I, I heard that, I thought he meant, like, QB. Like, like as something that contains a cube, not as in the letters Q and B. <laughs> like, that, that was just lost on me for an embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> But that's not even football, that's stupid hand egg. Anyway, so who cares? Uh, how long is this gonna go for? Because I'm already not interested in this. I've run out of sports anecdotes with my embarrassing QB story. Alright. So that was some kind of piece of shit sports game. Uh, next is Gauntlet Legends. I played this on the GameCube. But this was the original version of it. So I've got at least a little bit of experience. Yeah, that's fine. I don't need to save. Oh, no, I, I'm thinking of Dark Legacy, aren't I? It's one of those two gauntlet games. I get them all confused. But I know one of them started on the N64 and then kind of migrated to the Dreamcast and PS2 and stuff. I, I think that's a sequel to this game. But these are the characters we can play as. Where's the Valkyrie? I want to play as the Valkyrie. Um... I don't want to be a wizard. Archer. Secrets. It's not nice to keep see Ooh, Valkyries. I pick... Blue Valkyrie. That's not how you spell Freya. There's a J in there. Yes, I would like to... Uh, done. 
I don't need notes, I just need to play. Uh, Scorn, Sealed, Gateway, Power Magic, something, something, something. Hit some things and don't die. Got it. Okay. Eh, eh, eh. I can't heal. I can't kill you. I can go this way, sort of, can I? Okay. Well, what portal can I go through, guy? I guess this one. How boring looking. There's not even a portal there. It's just a hole in the wall. How embarrassing. Let's see, this is more of a portal. Alright, let's go. That was really well animated. I have to admit, I'm kind of impressed. Thank you. Destroy things so you can do things. Uh, I was really impressed with the smoothness of this animation. Okay, I recognize this stage from the GameCube game. <laughs> I remember this because it's got some secret uh, walls and dealy stuff. I remember thinking this stage was pretty cool. You know, for having... It, I'm surprised that it's running as like quickly and as smoothly as it is. It's, it's... It's... Like, playing relatively above its weight class for, you know, an N64 game. I expect it to be kind of choppy. This is actually running surprisingly smooth. Am I just breathing fire now? I guess I am. Fush. Yep. I don't know if these things are riding turtles or they just have brown legs and really ugly pants. But I think they're not coming anymore. Open. I command you. It's kind of nice that it has like a voice dialogue, kind of like the original gauntlet. This isn't bad. I'm guessing that the like game I played was probably like a sort of re-release sort of sequel that uses some of the same levels but like kind of gives you a different story or something. Because I do remember this. There's Turbo? What's Turbo? Okay, I need to figure out what Turbo is now. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm pretty sure it's just hold A. <laughs> Unless you're asking me to use my controller's turbo buttons. In which case, I don't think the standard N64 controller had those. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty certain of it. Because I've got a few of them. This isn't bad, though. Whoop. Alright. Yeah, it looks like these guys are, like, riding some kind of, like, turtle creature, but I think they just have, like, big baggy brown pants. We're not making any progress. As long as more guys are swarming us, we gotta cut them off at their source. Problem is, getting there is gonna get us killed. Valkyrie need food badly. Okay, there's lots of information that you can scroll through with the C buttons. I'm not sure how useful any of it is, but you can do it. Uh, you hold A and B and you can kind of... It's like a sort of block combo. A little bit. Okay, we really got to go after this. Huh. You know, if you just, like, direction uh, stick into an enemy, you automatically attack them. That's kind of a neat uh, quality of life thing. Saves you uh, some uh, button life, I guess. Red switches are off. So make them green. I don't even know what you said that time. Audio compression on the N64 was kind of really awful. That's why playing Mega Man Legends was kind of bad. But... I still think having the control stick made that a lot more playable. But it's been years since I've played the N64 version. Actually, it's been years since I've played the PlayStation one as well. I really like Mega Man Legends as well. I should uh, try and find an excuse to play that again. Uh-oh. We got, like, a, a special Meiji guy. Okay, the use button. What is the use button? Uh... 
I don't know what it is. This game is not telling me. It's telling me to consult a manual, isn't it? Well, joke's on you, game. This is a multi-cart. <laughs> it's not exactly heavy on manuals. The only manual it came with was a little PDF that explained that despite the fact this is not an EverDrive, it has the exact manual of one. Because I think they just repurposed the guts of one or something. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of the GameCube game. Although that level was much further in. I think that'll be enough for that. That's not bad, though. That's not bad. You know, I've, I've certainly played less enjoyable games. I mean, I've played less enjoyable games on this console. And on this cartridge. Okay, so here's Gex 3, Deep Cover Gecko. This is a game that I played somewhat recently on my Pandora's box, but what's really weird about it, despite being labeled in NTSC, it's in Deutsch. So, uh, I'm hoping this version's at least in English, so I can tell what's going on. I do have a bit of a story about this game, though. And that is, uh, my local video store had both N64 Gex games, and I always wanted to rent this one. I managed to do it once, but uh, every other time I tried to rent this game, it would give me Gex 64. And I think the reason for that was because the, like, uh, I'm going to continue without saving. Uh, I think someone stole the uh, this game from it. <laughs> this is supposed to be a cutscene because the N64 version of Gex and... Uh, Gex 3 didn't have cutscenes so much. I don't think. Oh, holy shit. It actually does have proper cutscenes. I want to say that is one of the uh, Playboy ladies circa the 90s who was hired to be like some kind of sexy secret agent who was Gex's partner who was kidnapped. The Gex plot was uh, very very weird, because Gex was ostensibly just a rich kid who inherited a lot of money, and just decided to be uh, shut in and just watch TV all day until, like, some robot sucked him into TV, and that robot might be his dad, I except I think that was mostly just a Star Wars reference throwaway joke, but no one's ever been sure about it, because <laughs> they've only ever made three Gex games, and they were all kind of god-awful, and they never really answered anything. Uh, okay. So, Gex 3 is, I think structurally speaking, in terms of its level design, a lot better than Gex 64. Because Gex 64 was one of, like, the most Me Too of Me Too platformers I've ever seen. Like, maybe not as bad as Bubsy, but it didn't really understand the value of 3D level design so much. Like, I, I would always say that something like Mario got 3D level design right. And, and you can see at the start of this, it was trying to be sort of Mario, letting you pick, like, your different, like, quest objectives and seeing a little hint on it. But the original Gex 64, not this one, mind you. I, I can't speak so much about this one. You're, you're kind of experiencing it with me. But um, the original Gex 64, while you could select different objectives, all the levels were designed linearly. So while you could select different objectives, it was either do you want to leave at the earliest convenience or at the latest one or at some point in the middle. You know, whereas I think this one was a little bit more, um, a bit more openly designed, which is certainly good. But Gex, I think, otherwise is pretty much just known as being obnoxious and having a uh, comedian do a bunch of really bad quote-unquote jokes that are entirely references from, well, I want to say the 90s, but they were dated even then. Like, seriously, I, I grew up with these games and... Even I didn't get most of the references. I, I got my parents to sit and watch uh, some Gex quotes once, and they didn't get most of the references either. So, you know. Um, the only other really interesting thing I can say about Gex is, depending on where you were in the world, he had a different voice actor, which sounds really obvious, but I mean, like, for an English dub. They got a different uh, English comedian, depending on if you were playing, like, the North American version or, like, the... the uh, British version. So they cared about making the jokes sort of kind of relevant, but they're pretty much entirely 
entirely just bad references. But uh, that's that's Gex in a nutshell. He was a weird character with a terrible premise, a uh, lack of any sort of character or desire to be interesting. And yet I played a lot of one of the games, mainly because I wanted to see what the other one was about. Also, there were Game Boy knockoff games of, or uh, Game Boy, they weren't knockoffs, they were official, but they were like Game Boy versions of these games, and they are apparently horrific. I've only ever seen one copy once at a garage sale, and uh, I was too young to buy anything at the time, my dad wouldn't buy it to me for me because he hates video games. Boom! We got one of the gold remotes so we can rule TV land. We're going to get that message every time. Uh, fun story, I've said this numerous times, uh, I did not have a memory card back in the day, so, you know, not having a memory card with some of these games was really, really rough. I don't recall if these have passwords, I'm pretty sure these are, are, uh, memory card saves only, but it might have a password, but I mean... I, I think X64, like, will display a password if you, uh, actually password properly. A lot of the things in this game, or, or at least in Gex 64 again, that's that's kind of my frame of reference, are, like, really bloody obtuse. Like, every stage had, like, a, a secret... Ha ha ha, he wrote Gex in, in snow and it's in yellow. That's that's so edgy, guys. I'm, I'm sure that would be funny to the one person who wrote it and no one else ever. Ugh. Um. I, I've lost my train of thought now. I'm just stuck with Gex being Gex, which is basically terrible. Oh, God. Oh, oh, hey. You get a, a free slay. Nice. Also, I think that Santa Snowman's flipping you off. Because this game has pretenses to be slightly edgy, but not actually edgy, or they wouldn't be able to sell it for kids. It should be noted that the the sort of tail jump bounce thing is not holding the button in the air. It, it's kind of like a classic NES DuckTales, where you have to like just... It, it, it's more of like a double jump, where you have to tap jump in the air and then hold it in order to do it. Which is mostly just not really fun or intuitive, and this game feels like it's eating frames and, and inputs left, right, and center. Seriously, uh, that Gauntlet game was relatively smooth, especially for how much stuff it had going on. This game is um, struggling a lot. This is more what I kind of expect from the N64, honestly. Like, it's like, it's not unplayable by any means, but I wouldn't call it a smooth experience. Ugh. Um, but like I said, I only ever rented this game once, and I remember two distinct things about it. And the first thing I remember is that this stage has a snowboard thing, if you can get far enough in. And then later on, you get like a, a level in like a destroyed town where you get to pilot a tank. And I remember back when I was trying to rent this game, and the uh, stupid uh, video store clerk kept giving me the wrong game. They once asked me, why does it matter what the difference is? And I'm like, well, well, first of all, they're completely different games. But second of all, this one has more stuff to do in it. It's slightly less rudimentary and obnoxious, but still pretty much. I can't speak about uh, this particular game, but like I said about the other Gex game, this, that, that, which is, again, my entire frame of reference. You're going to be hearing this a lot. Um... The original uh, Gex 64, which is not the original Gex game, the original Gex game was a 3DO game of all things, and it was a 2D platformer, because like Bubsy, it was a very Me Too sort of character who couldn't stick to any one platform because it was a massive failure no matter where it went. Um, you know, I, I remember the uh, Gex 64 and like just the original Gex that I played, the, the second one ostensibly, I remember it being weird whether you got the N64 or PlayStation version, because the PlayStation version had more voice clips, and I know that doesn't sound like a good thing, because Gex is almost as annoying as Bubsy, but not actually, but almost, um, 
But when you realize that he's obnoxious and has less things to say, it gets even worse. The N64 version, he has, like, every stage he has, like, three lines of dialogue that he just repeats forever, and he doesn't ever shut up. Um, whereas the PlayStation version, I think he had something like three times as much dialogue, so every stage you'd have, like, nine bits of dialogue or something, and there was actual, like, CGI cutscenes that were terrible and, again, attempting to be edgy in a really, really lukewarm and sad way. But, um, I also remember the N64 version, in spite of having left less, um, voice clips, it had an extra level, and I remember it being, like, the most interesting level of the lot, because the original, uh, Gex 64, it, it had a little bit of Mario 64 problems when it came to its level creativity, because there were just so many levels that repeated, like, I think every stage concept was repeated at least twice, maybe three times. And that's not good. That's, like, I know everyone loves Mario 64. I rented a lot, too. And one of the things I hate more than anything about that is because, is, like, half the stages are just repeated concepts. Also, Wet Dry World is an incomplete test stage, and I will defend that forever. I don't know what that does, but assuming that means bonus. But, you know... The, the original uh, Gex 64, that certainly had that kind of problem too, where every stage was repeated, and they weren't necessarily well designed either. The camera was awful, which is pretty true to pretty much all these games, but you know. I, I still think this one's probably better, even though I haven't played much of it, and I don't really want to play a ton more until I have to like review it <laughs> someday when someone pays me to. Because, Lord knows, I don't think I really want to go back to this anytime soon. Um, but, yeah, this this is Gex. It's kind of awkward Me Too 3D platforming with a Me Too mascot that desperately wants you to think he's edgy. And really, he's not. <laughs> they, make, they want you to think he's funny. He really, really isn't. He's just sort of there. He takes up space. You do your best not to acknowledge him because the moment you do, you're you're in for a lifetime of regret. That's that's what I can tell you from my personal experience with Gex. Oh, let's reset and play the other Gex game that's gonna make me sad because Gex. On the bright side, still haven't had any video glitches yet, so I think that we might have actually fixed it. So this is the second Gex game and the original one I played. Um. And, and like I said, this is going to have less audio. Uh, it's not going to have any continue without saving. It's not going to have any cutscenes. Uh, but it does get one extra stage, and we will play it. Because why not? Also, for some reason, we start and exist in this weird non-Euclidean space in a tux because this is, I guess, what the inside of the TV is also I really hope you like that sound if you want to play this game because you will not get away from it that's the sound of the the uh, freaking goddamn uh, <laughs> camera not working this is the secret level it's Titanic which means it's entirely underwater uh, they did I, I don't think they recorded any extra audio for it um, I think this is the most interesting stage. I also think it's really obnoxiously designed. <laughs> like, this game is... This stage did not exist in the PlayStation version, and I think the reason was, aside from just giving the uh, N64 something that it could claim made it the better version, even if it kind of wasn't. You know, this is something that's exclusive to it, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily good. Also, they spawn us literally outside the Titanic. Also, there's a maze with sharks and, like, taxi turtles. I remember that. Also, swimming in this is not fun, which is why this is the only stage that ever uses it. It's a platformer, not a, a swimming game. Although I'm getting, like, Subnautica flashbacks. Ghost Leviathans are just going to start spawning everywhere on me, and I'm going to be sad. Also, hot take, but Titanic was a terrible movie. Alright, uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio isn't much of an actor. 
Look at me with all the uh, spicy hot takes. Okay, so we gotta turn down the water level somehow, somewhere, or they, they could just spawn it behind you where you never see it. That's fine too. That's not obtuse dickish level design at all, Gex. Uh, Gex. Freaking, I hate Gex. <laughs> I really hate Gex. Not as much as I hate Bubsy, but Gex is definitely up there. Uh, I still wouldn't say this is the worst. Oh god, the, the bad knockoff uh, Austin Powers voice makes me sad. <laughs> this game is so bad. Uh, but, you know, I, I wouldn't say this is the worst 3D platformer on the N64. I've played worse. Uh, I've played worse that I think people would defend as being good games. Like, spoilers... This might be a hot take. I really dislike uh, Rayman 2. <laughs> I don't think Rayman was good until uh, Rayman Origins, which was really, really good. The first Rayman was pretty, but it was a really not well-designed game. Um, Rayman 2, I, I also find to be just jankily designed. And I think it had one of those like ideas where... You know, we're going to put 100 Mario coins in every level, and at some point you're going to have to have all of them or you can't continue, and I hate that. I just freaking hate it. Ironically, I, I played the uh, prototype just to see if there was conceptual possibility of making a Rayman 2 in 3D. Uh, that was a game called Tonic Trouble, and I remember thinking that was a better game than Rayman 2. Although I'm betting that's not a very good game either. Okay, we're, we're actually sliding. That's going to mess with the actual physics here. Also, ugh. yeah, we're, we're not playing at a remotely stable frame rate at this point. <laughs> Making me really wish I was still playing Gauntlet. Ugh, okay, where am I going? You can slip on these puddles of water and they basically knock you off this whole thing, so we have to avoid all of them. I remember this. I don't know why this is my favorite Gex 64 level. I just... I don't. But it is. It doesn't even use uh, new new uh, music. It reuses music from a uh, horror theme level. And this is going to knock me over for... Gex. Uh, I feel bad for my younger self having played so much of this game. Because I was, like, weirdly nostalgic for it. I think even back then I didn't think it was good. It was just one of those kind of games you rented so that you had something to play. But, you know, thinking back on it, I was also the kid who, like, every day for three years went to that video store with the intents of uh, renting Mischief Makers, and it wasn't until I was basically forced to that I ever actually did. And that was an actual good game. <laughs> this is Gex. <laughs> That's not an obnoxious dialogue box location at all. That's fine. Also, vertical platforming. Also, also vertical platforming with teleporting maze and, and, and. Um... Instant death. I believe there's instant death. I think you, if you fall far enough, you just die. You don't uh, go back in the water. It's not a single continuous thing, even though it looks like it might be. I think we have to hop into these and you teleport. All right. Yeah, yeah. And that almost dumps you outside the... F ah, Gex. Ugh. Also, you're going to want to punch him after saying tail time for the second time. Because that is literally what his quote-unquote catchphrase is supposed to be. You know, I, I'm just immediately reminded of the fact that Bubsy had a cartoon. Like, it was... It was... I have to use, like, the control pad to get through this. It was a one-episode pilot that was just... Made you want to punch Rob Paulson for being Bubsy. Like, within the first couple lines of dialogue from Bubsy. Like, I think the first thing he says is, like, literally what is supposed to be his catchphrase, and he repeats it, like, eight times in the show. It's like, why did anyone think Bubsy was a good idea? I really hope Rob Paulson got paid well for Bubsy, at least. 
Oh, and Lonnie Manella, who had to play uh, Bubsy in the awful, awful Bubsy 3D. I hope she got paid well, too. Although, to be fair, she's has since been in significantly better stuff. I think most recently, I think she was Shiva in uh, Mortal Kombat. Which is kind of interesting. But for me, she'll always be Rouge the Bat or uh, Astal from one of my favorite Saturn games. That shares the same name. Ugh, there we go. Screw you, Gex. God damn it. I hate Gex so much. You know, I've kicked around the idea of doing a Let's Play of Gex. At least this one gives you passwords. I don't think the other one did. Do I want to do another stage? I don't. Let's do another stage. Just because it makes me sad. Uh, let's find the end of the cave, because this is like the hardest to find one. This stage is actually kind of openly designed. This isn't actually a, a stage to show what I'm talking about when I talk about Gex 64 stage design so much. Also, there's a terrifying shark. And we have to ride this taxi turtle to get past, because the door won't open unless we do. But don't worry, it dumps us in front of sharks anyway. And for some reason, Gex doesn't want to swim. Okay. Okay, frame rate. Just let me go. Just let me go. Thank you. <sighs> oh, man. I, I'm just thinking of all the other 3D platformers on the N64. I'm going to have to play at some point. I'm just going to turbo the swim button. I do not have the button pressing interest right now. But, like, oh god, I gotta play Starshot at some point. At Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Oh, well. I've got, like, freaking PTSD from those games. And I don't mean that disingenuously. Like, I, I have had nightmares about those games that are just that bad. Starshot, a game that was awful and dared to tease a sequel that never showed up. So we just have what is ostensibly a bad ending teased to a game that will never happen. Uh, at least the frame rate's kind of sort of stable right now. That's kind of nice. There's no shark in here, Gex. Alright. I think those jellyfish do hurt you, even though they're just flat images. And that piranha definitely will hurt you. Because he's a piranha. Although their voraciousness has been overstated numerous times. Like, I think you'd have to submerge yourself in a, like, piranha tank forever to, uh... I, I mean that, uh... That shark was really wimpy, but, you know, you'd have to submerge yourself into a freaking piranha tank for, like, a day... Of just non-stop piranha eating to be actually devoured by piranhas. They, they have tiny teeth. They can't actually do all that much damage. It's not like, you know, you put a freaking cow into a, a tank of of these things and, and then suddenly it's just a cow skeleton like you see in the cartoons. It's nothing like that. <laughs> piranha Veracity. It's uh, greatly overstated. I think this is actually where we started. Yeah, to the caves. Great, we circled. <laughs> Awesome. Let's do it again. Because good level design. We created a maze that lets you loop back to the start. Freaking Gex, man. I freaking hate Gex. So much. I'm genuinely kind of surprised Gex hasn't gotten a sequel. Seeing as, like, everything else has. Robocod was supposed to get a sequel, although I think that got nixed. Duke Nukem got a sequel that was terrible. Bubsy's gotten two for some reason. Where's where's the new Gex? Or, you know, let's let's pick a cool mascot that actually had a good game. Where's the next Restar? You know, we, we could use a new Restar right about now. Restar was awesome. 
I like Free Star a lot. Man, I reviewed that game forever ago, but man, is it good. That's a must-have Genesis game. And I'm sad I don't own a copy of it. I don't think this is where I need to go. Bonk. Also, hit detection in this game is... Uh, special is a good word for it. Mostly because it only decides to work half the time. Like, you can be inside a thing and attacking it, and the game will half the time just not recognize you're doing anything. Which is not what I would call good game design or good hit detection at all. In fact, I would say it's kind of the opposite of that thing. My tail's gonna kick your butt. Ugh. My tongue, Doc. Freaking Gex, man. Hey, average guy lifestyle, how you doing? Large squeaky sound. Ugh. Freaking Gex, man. All right. So let's let's go over and then reset for the next episode. So, based on these past five games, would I recommend this multi card? Well, Forsaken. Very nausea inducing, but surprisingly fast paced. Spots. Sporks, Fox, Challenge, Hoops, whatever is a piece of garbage. Gauntlet Legends. That plays surprisingly well. I'm surprised that that plays as well as it does and is as smooth as it is. Gex 3 is the better of the two Gex games for what that's worth, which probably isn't much. Gex 64 is awful. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised Deep Cover Gecko takes up twice the space, though. Uh, based on these past five games, would I recommend this cartridge? Not really. Uh, the only game I would say is unequivocally good would be Gauntlet, and even that's definitely more of a, you know, your mileage will vary on that. But, you know, that, that wasn't bad. And if you could find Forsaken for, like, dirt, dirt, dirt cheap, maybe. Um, but I, I wouldn't really recommend this cart based on these past five Anyway, if you're watching on YouTube, we'll be back next week with Glover! Son of a bitch. I hate Glover. Glover's worse than Gex, damn it. <laughs> uh, but if you're on Twitch, we'll be back in just a sec. I'm just going to finish this up. But uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this look into my N64 multi-cart thing that isn't a multi-cart, but somehow claims it is for reasons that don't make any sense. Uh, if you really enjoyed, check this out on the stream, where you'll get to see this weeks in advance, because I'm, I'm a little spotty on my YouTube uh, videos right now. Mostly because I don't want to flood people's inboxes. Always think of you. Uh, you must want to check out and subscribe to my YouTube channel, see everything else I do, which is a lot of stuff. And if you really want to make my day, check out the show's PayPal or Patreon. Support the show any way you can so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability, which in this case is reminisce about how many awful awful 3D platformers I played on this stupid thing when I was a kid. Oh, dear lord. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, internet.